Lynx Bilden is a unique woman. She not only teaches primitive skills, but lives them. Every day, she wears the buckskin she made. This year, she is hoping to spend a year living completely Stone Age, only bringing materials she created. On the evening of January 19th, we drove 11 miles up Twist River Road to interview Lynx at our home. When we arrived, there were no lights on, so we stumbled from the car through her doorway, and I literally fell down the stairs into her living room. You primarily tan all your own hides and make all your own tools. To not a person like me, that seems really hard. Why do you love primitive skills? Like, what gets you really excited about it? It all gets really exciting to me. Every time I do a new skill, I'm like, this is my favorite thing, I just love this. Because, um, well, here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, when you see that something in your environment, in your natural environment, can serve you for whatever function that you need. Let's say, um, let's say something simple like, we need to make a fire because it's all that, but we don't have matches or a lighter or anything like that. If you can look around in your environment and say, well, I know the trees, I know that the conifers are not going to be good for making fire, but the cottonwoods and um, some of the softer woods down along the rivers that we can make fire for the, from them. So we can pull down some sticks from the trees and we can look at the rocks literally on the ground all around us and we can crack a rock and make a blade out of it. So we can actually use a tool to fashion the sticks to make the fire. And when you can create something immediately for your basic needs, and it's right here in our environment. There's this incredible liberation, and it's also sort of a magical thing that we become disconnected from. And that's probably what is the most exciting thing. So I am, I really love animals, and I can't imagine killing animals myself, but I do love meat. <laughs> so, um, can you describe killing an animal to me, and like, what are your thoughts of that is going on? I was actually vegetarian for about eight years. When I was 16, I turned vegetarian and I didn't start eating meat again until I was 24. And I realized at that point a couple of things. One was that my body really wanted meat, and meat feels healthy in my body. And two, I wanted to, like I said, take responsibility for the, you know, the life that I was taking in order to sustain my own. And so I asked a farmer who lived next door to my mom if he'd show me how to kill a chicken. And he did. And, um, you know, we just held it upside down, like pulled on its head and broke its neck, essentially. And, and um, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a little bit of a traumatic thing to actually feel like the life force of an animal leaving from your own hands. And with a domestic, many times, you know, the domestics, they trust us because we've been feeding them and stuff like that. And so to bring like a domestic animal that's been handled its whole life and then lie it down and slit its throat with a knife. It's kind of shocking, I think, for the animal, and it's pretty intense for all the people involved, too. And, um, but what it does, that I think is absolutely vital, is it connects us to the cycles of life and death, and it's easy to just, like, block it out. Yeah. When you go to the store, it's like, block it out, you know, you don't even think, I, I'm not saying, you know, I go to the store and I buy my little cellophane wrapped chicken or whatever, and I don't give it as much importance or, um, I just don't recognize the sacredness. Um, if you were forced to move to New York City, what would be your favorite part? Uh, probably Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you mean? <laughs> I have been to New York City. I used to go to New York City quite a bit when I was younger because I don't like to fly very much. So I'd, I'd fly from Europe to New York and I'd take the bus across the country. And I used to have friends who lived in the city. So yeah, I've been in New York quite a bit. The park's pretty nice. I mean, yeah, not quite like tourist. <laughs> and what would be your least favorite part? Um, like, what couldn't you stand out of everything? Well, I just came back from Seattle today, and it's probably this, a similar thing there. And what I notice so much in the cities is that there's not that much contact between people because there's so much fear when you put that many people together. And 
you know, there's, there's not a lot of connection, and if there is any kind of connection, it's either somebody who wants something from you, or they think that you want something from them, so there's not just like this easy feeling of, of um, humanity, like, you know, caring about each other. And so I don't like that, it's probably my least favorite thing, just the fact that there's not much interaction between people, everybody's just busy doing this. Um, and then I watched the documentary about you, the one in French. Do you know it? Do you understand French? I understood, I'd say, like, maybe a little bit more than half of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, like, how was the process of creating that? Yeah, that was a really good thing when I started that. When I met Eric, who's the director of that film, I was pretty much asking for a sign to know if I was on the right path kind of a thing. And he contacted me within a, a few days, or maybe it was even the next day. And I looked at his work. Have you seen any of his other films? Mm -hmm. And he has a, quite a famous film that was an Academy nomination for a film called Himalaya that's set in Tibet and Nepal. And I saw that film and I was like, that's the guy who's going to, that's the man who I want to show, you know, who I want to show what it is that I do. And so he spent four months with me in 2010, and he did my whole program, and he called me the following year and said that he had a, a producer and a company that was willing to back a film, did I want to do it? And so I said yes. So I already knew him, and I knew his work, and I knew that he would tell a good story and make it beautiful because he's an exquisite artist. And so I was pretty happy with I was pretty happy with that. Nice. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was definitely, I like seeing what happens just every day. I don't know if you guys watch TV or even have a TV. But there's all these survival shows, they're like the popular mm -hmm. thing now. And most of them are about conflict or competition either between people and the environment. And that's been my big thing. It's like, well, surely what we need to learn as a race right now is how to work in cooperation with each other and with the earth. And so, you know, I've been talking to producers and finally we boiled it down to BBC and National Geographic and Morgan Freeman Productions. And I kind of thought, oh, I'll go with the National Geographic because they have the best reputation. But it turns out that it's all just about sensationalism and it's so shallow. And so, yeah, I just turned them down last week. We had a contract and everything. I hadn't signed it and I, didn't, I decided I didn't want to do it because... I saw some of the things that they're doing now, and even with their reputation, you know, I just feel like TV's just showing all the things that are the antithesis of what it is that I want to show to the world. I've heard about your Stone Age project, um, about living a year in the wild, and can you tell me a little bit more about that? Well, that's what I'm thinking is going to make really good film, you know, I mean, it's going to be exciting, it's going to be challenging. I've been thinking about doing a year Stone Age for probably 25 years, and I've always said to myself, I'm going to do it before I'm 50. And I'm going to turn 50 in the end of 2015. And so it's like, okay, I said, I'm going to do it before I'm 50. So I'm going to start in the fall of 2015. This is the plan anyway. And um, probably spend six months in preparation and six months of living full Stone Age and I need to find a place to do it, and we need sponsors and stuff like that. So it's going to take a lot of organization. And yeah, and I want somebody to come and to, to film that periodically, because I think it would make a pretty fascinating, fascinating documentary. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. You want to join? <laughs> uh, It appeared that lots of the students in the documentary were pretty young and just kind of trying to figure out what they were wanting to do. Is there like a general type of person that signs up for your class? Or? And then occasionally I'll get someone who will just be like, I've just been living this totally shallow life and I want to do something completely different. Last year I had a guy who actually came out to make um, a film. He actually was a TV producer and he came out to do a little thing because they were trying to make a new TV show. And he spent a week with us and I told him to just participate in the class. And two months or three months later he said, I quit my job and I want to join you. So he actually joined my program last summer instead. And yeah, so it, you know, it does. It's, it's not really, it's not me. I feel like I'm sort of a catalyst for it, but the earth herself is, is you know, will work 
and make magic on people and when people find that deep connection that so many of us have yearned for then yeah people will change their lives wow it's the last one <laughs> um what effect does your teaching have on the world if you think it has one well my Hope and desire is that it will help people recognize that the Earth's a living entity and that she is sustaining us all, and if we don't protect her, then we'll all perish. So I'm hoping that that's my message, that people will go, oh, yeah, that's right. And then if we care about something, if we love something and care about something, then we protect it. And if people are disconnected from the earth, then they won't love it. And if they don't love it, then they won't protect it. And if they don't protect it, then we will destroy it. <laughs>